Hello guys and welcome back to the shack. Today I've got a little special something here. This is a new hot spot. Well, I guess it's new. It's been out a while. It comes from China. Or that's where I got mine at from. It's called a jumbo spot. It's pretty cool. It's basically a Raspberry Pi Zero with a MMDVM board for the hat. So that's basically it right there in a nutshell. But I've got to say, I am very, very impressed. This thing is awesome. It runs on Pi Star. So you, this is what your dashboard sort of looks like. Yesterday, I spent about seven hours <laughs> getting this thing going going through the instructions and everything was pretty simple but I couldn't get it to work I could um, just couldn't get it to work at all I could hear people but I could go into the uh, brand master into my page into self care and I could see this hot spot I'd go in and set me up a, a static talk group TAC 310 and um, I could hear people talking but I keyed up my radio the um, the hotspot wouldn't it wouldn't even recognize that the radio was was being transmitted so what I did let me zoom out here just a little bit what I did to fix that it took me forever I worked like I said I worked on about seven hours trying to figure it out I went through all kinds of different configurations I watched YouTube videos I reflashed the SD card with the uh, with the Pi Star image. I did everything. I couldn't get it to recognize that my radio was transmitting. And finally, got to looking around on Google and I seen a picture. And in that picture, I'll um, I'll show you here. In that picture, there was a on the frequency let's see if I can find it here let's see yeah, right here the frequency the frequency that I was using was 436.225.000 and on that picture the guy's frequency he had put 500 kilohertz on the end of it I thought well that's odd so that's what I did I added 500 kilohertz to the end of my frequency and BAM Everything worked perfect. Then I got to looking around on the Pi Star. I'm going to take it off on the jumbo spot. This is kind of hard to do. I'm going to take it apart here and show you something. If I can do it here with one hand. I don't know if I can get it apart with one hand or not. Now, let me pause the video. Hold on. Okay, it's sort of hard to get it with one hand. So this is the MMDVM board and this is the Raspberry Pi Zero but if you look closely I don't know if I can get it on camera you see that in there there's a sticker on the bottom of that MMDVM board and it says transmit and receive offset 500 kilohertz I don't know if I can see if I can move it under the light here a little bit There we go. That was my issue. Like I said, once I added 500 kilohertz to my frequency on the end, bam, everything worked perfect. Everything came on. It is a really cool little, it's a really cool little board. I really like it. I really do. If I don't know if I can get it plugged up here with one hand, we'll get it um powered back up and I'll show you how everything works okay now it's booting up I love that everything is in a little it's a little bitty tiny case and it's got a little screen a little display here so it shows me you know the talk group that I'm on and the person's call sign that is transmitting it's pretty cool and I've been running it 
off of this battery pack. Yesterday, I got up early. Yesterday morning, I went down, grabbed my package, came back, and I ran this off of this battery pack. I ran it that I know of for about 10 hours. I worked on it for a while, trying to get it fixed. <clears throat> and once I got it fixed, I sort of just sat on the couch and watched a little bit of TV and just left it going to make sure everything was all right. So I ran it forever, forever on this battery pack. And I checked that. I thought, God, that battery pack's got to be getting dead. Gee whiz. And then I checked the uh, level on the battery pack. And it, it has four lights on it that indicate, you know, how strong the battery, how much you have left. And I thought, it's got to be getting down to nearly nothing. And I checked it, and it still had three lights. I still had three quarters of a battery, so it doesn't use very, very little. Very little. Okay, I just keyed up my radio. Focus! Let me change lenses, see, we'll see if that helps. There we go. Right, so like I was telling you, I love the little screen. It's super easy on the battery, which is awesome. I've got another display coming that I'm going to play around with. And um, I don't know, I might make a little, I don't know yet. I might make a little bigger box. I might not. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I do love this little display. Another thing I love about this is it's Wi-Fi. So once you go in and set up your Wi-Fi, once you put in, you know, like uh, for me, I put in my home Wi-Fi and I did my cell phone so that when I'm out in the mobile, you know, all I need is the little, the little box and a battery. And as long as I've got my cell phone and my DMR radio, I'm good to go. So I thought that was awesome. And I know a lot of you guys are going to ask about the configuration and getting it set up because these things are starting to they're starting to get popular. And I gotta say, it works great. And I think I paid. So you can, I guess you could do it cheaper if you want to. But I bought it has a whole as a kit just like this already. Everything put together, the board already sorted on it. I paid a hundred and fourteen dollars, and it was free shipping. It took me about two weeks to get it. I ordered it from eBay. Focus. There we go. All right. So that's that's how I got it, and that's what one of them cost. If you want to build one, you know, you can get the MMDVM board and a Pi Zero and put it all together and get you a little a little case to put it in. And I'm going to experiment with some different cases. So I'll do some more videos and show you guys different different case layouts and how they look. And it came with a little um, 440 megahertz antenna as well. So yeah, that's it. It's pretty cool. It's got lights, little LEDs here. I don't know if I can get it to focus with that LED blinking or not. No, nah, I can't get it through. But it's got lights here that light up depending on what mode you're in. And that's another thing I like. It'll do um, it'll do C4 FM fusion. It'll do DMR. It'll do D star. It'll do, um, let's see here, it'll do P25, it'll do next den, and it'll do cross mode. Crap, my screen's a touch screen, so I hit it. YSF to DMR, so that's um, Yaesu System Fusion to DMR. If you have a System Fusion radio, you can cross mode, and I guess they'll do it in reverse in the future or they might they might be already working that way i'm not for sure like i said i just got it yesterday so i don't know a terrible amount about it once you get everything set up 
it's I mean it's pretty simple I mean it's that's that's it once you get it set up it's pretty simple it's um it might seem hard but it's um it's really not the biggest thing I guess for in the beginning is finding is getting you I've got to go go have to get this connected to a Wi-Fi router or your phone in order to configure it in order to do that the absolute there's other ways you can do it the absolute easiest way is to pull the SD card out it's got an SD card here with a Pi star image on it pull the SD card out go to pistar.com or I think it's pistar.uk or something type Google Pistar and it'll pull up the website and they have a Wi-Fi configuration tool put in your SSID of your home networking put in your password and hit create and it will create you a configuration file and once you have your SD card in your computer you'll take that Wi-Fi configuration file and copy it over to the boot the boot directory of the SD card and once you do that and then you put the SD card back in the Pi Zero will recognize the configuration change everything to what you need it to be reboot come back on and then connect to your network and you're up and running then you can access this with your computer so that you can set all the settings up now I'm going to make a separate video. I'm going to show you exactly how to do all of that from step one. From taking it out of the box and plugging it up and doing it all from start to finish. So there's not a whole lot of videos out there on this yet. It, it's sort of still rather, still rather new. So I'm going to make a video and show you how that works. How to configure the whole, the whole deal. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to share this with you. This is the new, what's called Jumbo Spot. And I used it for about an hour, a couple hours last night. Talked to a couple other hams. It's, it's, they, they say it works great. It sounds great. Now there's going to be, when I get that other screen on there, it's there's some really cool stuff that you can configure that screen to show you. You know, signal, meters, I mean, there is a ton. It, it's, it's going to be a really cool project. So if you're into DMR and you like playing with hotspots and all that stuff, I, I have a, a Shark RF, but... Yeah, I love the shark. Love it. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love my shark. But the only thing is, you know, when I get into the mobile, I've got to have a battery pack. Then I've got to have a, a um, I've got a little um, router, a little wireless router. And, you know, it's just, it makes it hard. So with this, it just seems a whole lot easier. All i got to have is a battery pack. And if I've got everything configured right, put it in my car, turn on my, Hotspot on my phone, bam, done. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to carry all this other crap. So, that makes it a lot easier. Alright, so, that is the, what's called the jumbo spot. Which is basically, like I said, a Pi Zero and an MMDVM board. And... Shazam, that's it. It's basically the same thing as a Zum Spot. If you know what a Zum Spot is. They're both made in Asia. They're, I mean, it's, I mean, they're pretty much identical. Just about. Just about. A few little differences, but they're pretty much identical. Yep. Alright, guys, that's it for now. I don't want to make the video too long. But I want to show you the dashboard here.
all the stuff you can configure, you can do an update, blah, 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 blah. But we're going to get into that. There'll be a separate video for that. I've got a ton of videos to make. I've got some new items here in the shack. Check this out. Are you ready? <laughs> I got a new FTM 400. I've really been wanting one for a while. I thought, what the hell? You only live once. So, I bought one. I've got some 2 meter 440 stuff, but I wanted the bigger screen and being able to touch screen and crossband repeat and C4FM. And, on tap 310. and all that good stuff. Alright, guys, that is the jumbo spot. Seven threes for now. Don't forget to like my videos and please subscribe if you enjoy watching the videos I make and you enjoy what I do. Please subscribe. I need all the subscribers I can get. I'm just a few shy. Just a couple hundred shy from getting my partnership back. Not my partnership, but my, um, the YouTube. Well, they pulled everybody's stuff. I don't know why they did that, but oh well. Anyway, seven threes from now, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to get on the air. If you have any questions or need any help, you know, you know how to get a hold of me. My call sign at yahoo.com, kg4vdz at yahoo.com, and I'll try to answer your questions or help you if I can. So, all right, guys, hope to hear you on the air. You can usually catch me on TAC 310, and um, that's it, seven threes.